So this is the kit from PF Jones. You've got your bowl of wires, your 13 pin socket, two different types of rubber gaskets for the back, depending on which way you have the cable coming out. Just a bunch of cable ties and your connectors. Whatever that is. And then just some sort of checklist. And obviously the instruction booklet, which doesn't have any writing in it, just pictures, so you've got to guess. So the first thing I'll do is unravel the coil and see if I can find how to get it to behind the front uh, passenger wheel. So after trolling the internet for what seems like hours and hours for some sort of guide to install 13 pin electrics on a T5.1 caravel or transport or whatever, um, I haven't found one so I thought I'd do one. Um, obviously I've got the PF Jones uh, 13 pin um, electric kit for this model. I bought the tow bar elsewhere, cheaper. Um, I've read it a few times and I've already taken some panels off inside ready, but there was a couple of things that I struggled to find. One of them being the driver's side um, access to the CAN bus area. Now I looked and looked at the pictures and then when it says it's down the side here, you literally cannot see anything where there is a rubber gasket or hole to get to the driver's side. And then I twigged. If you look closely at this picture, it says, I don't know what I'm supposed to say, but to lift something away as if it's hiding behind something. So I managed to find it in the gap down here hard to show you you've got a heat shield and then there's like an insulation I think now maybe you get behind that there is a rubber gasket which I believe is the one it means I haven't looked yet but that's the one that you use to get to the driver's side and then the rest of it, I presume, is going down there, connected to the battery, passenger seat to the back. Now, the only thing I'm going to do first is get the wire down here, under the van and to the back, and then I'll do the rest of it. Because I believe it goes up through here, across here, and then down through that side somewhere. Another thing that you need to do is take off all the plastic trim cover, protector, whatever you want to call it, along the side using sockets. So I've got the 13 pen electrics to roughly the back of the spare wheel um, hanger, if you want to call it that. So now it's time to take the under protector off and then start taking this section out. I've already taken the wheel out. So now you need to undo these two, which are bigger than the front ones, these nuts. And then there's three, I think, across the front. And then you've just got these to pull out so that it releases this side of the plastic as well as the bumper. Two more of the um, pull-out ones. 
or if you can screw them out. Lift up there a bit. Rubbish. I can't get them out, I've just been using some long nose pliers. Turns around, pulls out. So on the wheel arches, there's two screws on mine either side, and they are a T20 fitting. Both are not the same on yours, that's a dumb question. Need the lever, the bumper. Oh. So, without trying to snap it. Just some clips here. I need to get out. Parking sensors, you need to know disconnect them. I'm actually pushing the actual sensor itself out. It's a lot easier than just unplugging each cable. two prongs you need to spread out and then it will just push through from the outside so that's the bumper now i need to take the bumper bar off so it's a size 13 nut that you need to get out one of them is quite easy the other one you will need some sort of extension well i managed to just pull this forward slightly and get a spanner behind it because i don't have an extension for that socket. That was long enough, it needs a good six inches. So then that gives you access to where the, the actual tow bar brackets are going to go for you then to be bolting through underneath. So the tow bar I've gone with is a Brink one. I got it from Euro Car Parts uh, for about 113 quid as I had a discount code. Um, 120 kilogram nose weight and 2.8 um, thumbs pull. The side brackets are already attached, welded. All you've got is three bolts on each side and obviously two for the, the actual tow bar itself. So now that the, the bar's off, I'm gonna offer this up into where it needs to be. And you've got the three bolts that need to go through underneath for each side. So 
something like that. So now you've got that in. You've got three bolts either side. You've got a washer and a gripping, gripping washer. You will need a torque wrench of some sort as you have to tighten them up to certain um, newton meters. The three side ones are 79 and the front ones are 195. So you need to make sure you have them the correct tightness of which this will click when it gets to the point where I've set it at 79. Now one way of lining the holes up easier is to put something in one of the holes to make it as if there was a bolt there, just so you can adjust and find the next hole. So this is one side, you can see the three holes, you can pop something in there like that, Alan Keel something, and it gives you something to hold it in the position. Don't tighten one side up until you've got all of your bolts in position and just do them hand tight. So that's the three bolts in. This one on both sides isn't really that far in. It's quite stiff. And then grab your torque wrench. This is a 19 millimeter socket. Finger tight now. Do them all slowly at a time. You hear the click? That means it's got to the tension.
so that's all free talked up till about 79 now it's got to do the other side so i've still got the electrics to run across the engine bay into the driver's side but as the tow bar is now on and the electrics are run underneath the main feed has gone down to a hole in the back corner there and then comes so you can get here somewhere where that blue pipe it then goes down the engine bay I think you can see in the middle there through there and once it comes down from the engine bay it comes across the top of that blue pipe and um, it runs along them which is the fuel pump I presume feeds runs off the top of there which then comes along the top of this and then I've tied it to the pillar, this bracket here because then it goes up under the passenger seat there and obviously I've taped it and throttled it through the original um, rubber seal and then I used a piece of lighting um, cable as I had a bit of laying around and I pushed it along the top of the fuel tank until I could see it at the other end it did take a little bit of a few attempts to get there but once I got it across then I um, electrical taped the 13 pin to the end of it and then pulled and pushed pulled and pushed um, across the top of the fuel tank So once it comes out the top of the fuel tank, I've tied it to the chassis there. I've then come around the side of the fuel tank. Up underneath this corner here, which then brings it out over there where I've cable tied it to the chassis again. Can get that angle? Which then you've got a straight run away from the wheel and the uh, suspension and then another cable tied to the chassis then once it's come from that chassis I've then come to this bracket and table tie it, cable tied it next to where the, the last the, um, bolt for the tow bar is I'm across to where the um, reverse sensor cables are and I've cable tied it to that because the plastic covering should cover that I've left it a bit loose so I can still Freddle some back through depending on how high up the plastic goes and then I'm going to come around the same way the wires for the reversing sensors are and then obviously you follow that round and then that gives you enough that's about that's all it is extra which I'll um, cable tie to the tow bar and obviously it's going to come through there so that's the cable fed to the back of the car from the engine bay. Well, it's just started raining, but I've got the plastic covers back on. And then obviously, tighten up the cable ties. And then the rear plastic wheel well cover just goes in that gap here where the push clip is and then comes down underneath to the corner so the cable comes out where the parking sensors are and um, I've run it underneath here I've cable tied it with the parking sensor to that end and I've got about a foot excess which I'll just fold up underneath once I've put the socket on um, and then I've cable tied the parking sensors again and then just to the corner of that. Now on something I've seen on another video is someone 
is cutting this I think or cutting the under plastic cover where the wheel is I've not cut anything I don't I don't see a need to there's no way where it's protruding so I don't know but it's ready to go on I'm going to put the bumper back on and then I'll attach the, the actual towing part and the electrics after just so I can drive it basically and then obviously I've still got all the electrics to do at the front end to do once I've disconnected the battery the only thing I have got to do which I have put the underlining back on is put the rubber bum back in underneath the passenger seat which I'm hoping I can do from the inside so now I'm going to attach the bumper you've got the clips across the bumper and it more or less has it in the correct place you've got these two catches here as well it's just a case of pushing it all back in so it's nice just got the two clips to put in underneath where the bumper attaches to the footwell plastic cover which I'll do now then just a case of putting everything back. And you've got your two bumper screws.
Don't forget to put this rubber seal in. I have managed to do it from the inside as I've already put all the plastic um, protectors back on. So that's that bit done. So stuff that we've got to sort these out to the light blue block over there. On instructions it says to cut this back section off. I'm presuming because you can see it's not going to fit through that tiny hole. That done. I'm going for the connection straight through rather than the connection straight to the side. I suppose you can always pull it back through. Let's, let's not shoot ourselves in the foot. Give ourselves a bit. I'll even fold that back like that. Now on, on this one, I don't know if it'll be the same. It tells you the numbers. And obviously you've got the diagram as well. We've all got the gold connectors already on. <coughs> so it's basically it's telling you which pin and what colour wire. Just push it from the front. And now we have access to all the screws. A little flathead. Yep. So, doesn't say what to go for first. Start with number one, which is yellow. Two is black. Oh, blue, I should say. BL blue. Now there's two blues here. One has a black stripe on. The other one is solid blue. Number three, oh, it's two A. Ah, oh, two A's here. Hasn't got any inscribed, but it has got it on the diagram. Two A. Which is that one. 
way is blue and black because that's the one I previously said about. I've done three. I'll um, pause and then do the rest of them. So that's it. 13 pins. Number 12 is empty. Don't know why. Um, when you're screwing it in, obviously, once you've done it, pull it, make sure it's taut, it's not loose. Otherwise, keep going or you might not have it in correctly. So now we've done that, we can pull the rubber seal back. Three bolts, three nuts, and then a gripping washer. Obviously, the flap lifts up. And then there's the gliding pin. Mm -hmm. This slot is the bottom of your plug, I believe. With that and the fat. On the back, you've got your three grooves, and it won't line up properly if you do it a different way. Lock that in. You can see it in the seal there. I need to pull the rubber the right way. Where are we? Pull it back over it. And just pull and make sure the rubber's all the way around it properly. And then that will grip onto it, you don't have to hold it. Push two bolts through. Locking. Locking washer on. You can hold your nut there. It's only a posy. You can feel the nut coming through. Don't do it tight till you've got the rest on. Probably would be easy if you did it before you put the bumper on, but it means you don't have to rush putting everything on to be able to dry it. Gone through. There we go. Last one. Wash it. Do that one right up. And 
once it gets so tight the gripping washer will do what it needs to do. It means you don't need a spanner. There we go, the electrics are finished. So I've just finished doing the, or getting the wire from the connection there, across the engine and then into the cab itself. So what it says in the instructions is, to take off this panel, which is behind the battery, using T27, um, start a bit again just a fix in here and a fix in underneath the plastic here and then there is a rubber um, seal with wires already coming through it so again unpick the tape put your wire through retape it I've then gone through the top underneath the wiper motors and you come across and again there's a smaller one uh, fix in there and a fixing just under the lip here and then again there's a rubber seal in this corner you can take it out untape it again and then the cable runs down there to just behind the soundproofing flap where you can see the red seal that's where the rubber grommet is so that's that bit done and it's all inside the cab now waiting to wire up to where the canvas is so I'll just put these back on and I might call it a day for today so the cab side it comes somewhere just behind that I push the twin and a half cable through again just for something to pull through and we've already got all of these panels off you just start with this panel and pull it off and then this section there is a screw I think somewhere around here I can't remember now and then just a few screws underneath to get it out. And now I just need to work the wire somewhere up to where we need to be on here. So I've brought the cable up, this comes from under there, and then I've peeled this back and then just come straight across up the back corner to the top. And then they only just get to there. And then I've peeled out the orange and brown and the orange and green off the white and then the black wire with a red stripe because there is another wire in here which is red with a black stripe but on my instructions is a black with red and then the new wire is red with black so make sure you can tell the difference the red and black wire on the brown on on this canvas is actually a thicker wire anyway, so it kind of gives you the clue. You can tell uh, that they're more or less the same size. So I've dug them out. They're a bit sticky from the, the tape. Um, and now it's time to undo the battery before we do any other electrical work. So, the 13 pin is attached at the back, all wired up. The wires are through to the under the seat, not connected, and the wires are into the canvas area, still not connected. So the first thing you do, by the instructions, is pop. attach the positive side of the loom and then this is the negative side of the loom so these two can now go over this um, bolt and use the nut to attach
Obviously you can't attach it back onto here, but we can attach it to this section. That's this part done, minus this bit which is next, so we've attached the neutral or negative side and then we've attached the positive side. So the next thing to get out of the kit is an adhesive pad, an adhesive pad and the box. So now we're going to attach this section, but there is a, a clip to go on. Make sure you put it around the right way. Like so. And then it's up again. Make sure it's fully in. Make sure the rubber seals correctly around it. adhesive pad they give you two but there's not enough room to put two on and their instructions is to put it somewhere where you can see it so obviously that's going to be back over there
There we go. Stuck it over there. So all we've got to do now is once we finish wiring up is to put the negative back on. The neutral there. So you put the normal wire on one side. Hold it together. and clamp it shut with some pie. So that's the brown and orange done. Basically you've got two metal bits where the wire slices through to give the contact across them both. So you get one Let's see if you can zoom in. You get the wire in one half. Just because the the length of these new wires aren't very long, I don't really want them poking out the end of the scotch block. Right, I think that's got it. <laughs> There we are, they're both done now. And you've got, it's slightly broken up, but I'm going to put some electrical tape around them anyway. Now you've just got the black or red stripe to connect to the red with black stripe. This one for some reason is a lot longer than the orange one. Come 
a bit to go on. thing to do is check to see what sort of fitting is behind this so all you've got to do is push twist and pull as you can see I've got a large connector block compared to a large connection box is not option one and small is option two so we go to pit number 25 so now I can go back so it's just the opposite push it in and then it clicks in pretty easy. So all you've got to do is locate the light blue connector block. Obviously with it being a caravel you don't have, or in my car, you don't have a front bench, it's just a single seat. So the seat itself doesn't actually lift up. So you just need to disengage the blue connector. So, see if there's enough leeway to pull it out. So under the passenger seat, you've got your blue uh, connector. We want this bottom one, just underneath the clip, uh, grey and white. Double check. Grey and white. No for grey and white. Nope. Definitely grey and white. So I'm gonna give me a bit of leeway. Let's cut it a little bit up. Like that. And then on this section you want to put your female thing but you need to take some of the outer casing off like so I don't know how much of this you can actually see taking some of the outer wiring casing off so this one wants to be the female end. And obviously you put the wire in this bit and then you clamp it shut. Got some proper wire cramps somewhere, but I've got grippers, so I don't see why I need to then slot oh, slot the plastic cover on. You hear a click, so that side's done. And then on the other side of the wire you've cut, you want to put the spade or male part with the bigger plastic.
pushed a big one onto the clips. I know it's a bit tight, you didn't really get to see that, but that's that section done. So on the wire that we poached through from underneath, because mine's a T5.1, I don't need the blue with white stripe. I only need the solid blue and the blue with a black stripe. I've already took some of the outer sheathing off. I'm just going to twist them round. And then by the instructions, the blue. So the blue has the male fitting. Is this one double check and then you just need to pop it on again it's gonna crimp up I kind of want the end one to grip the sheath in a bit so it doesn't come off. There we go, all flat. Big one on again. And push it onto your clip. Here clip. On. I'm going to tape all these up and then blue with black stripe. It's the female connection. Small cover. Again, you hear a clip when you put it the right way. Clip. So the solid blue wire that you poked through goes connecting to the bit that is nearest the block. Like so, and then the blue and the black goes to the bit opposite, or well, I should say furthest away from the block. You should feel like a click and then it shouldn't come back out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tape around all these just so they're nice and secure. So I've taped Tape them up. Now I'm just going to plug it back in. That's it. All the wiring finished underneath the chest. I've just taped these up as well. Just as a precaution, shouldn't need it. I'll take them two together. So it's nearly 10 o'clock now, so I'm just going to leave the battery unhooked tonight, and then tomorrow I'll connect it back up again. So, the final piece of the puzzle after doing all the electrics is to attach the actual tow ball itself. <coughs> now, my instructions it says to bring it 
through from the back. And I can just get the bolts through with the bumper on. finger tight so they're finger tight again torque wrench um, this time they're 195 All, um, all done. Uh, 195. Uh, torque again. I'm probably going to spray paint it black so it all matches. Job done.